from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need any 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Uh, we'll be joined this hour by Bob Saget. And uh, we have a lot to talk about uh, with Bob. Uh, but in the meantime, well, we're getting so many calls about Awatuki Sioux. That I want to give you a chance to blow off some more steam about this in case you just tuned in or you don't know about it. Uh, for the last 21 months, the most common question asked for this program is, whatever happened to that chick, Awatuki Sue, who confessed to murdering the father of her child on the air? They, it had been ruled a suicide, but she said she'd actually killed him. Well, Phoenix police think they know who she is. And the story appears on our website, uh, blowmeuptom.com. It also appears on our MySpace page, uh, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. Uh, you can read all about it. You can hear the original phone call. Uh, the Phoenix police believe that uh, it is a woman named Megan Suzanne Weiss, and she has been formally charged in this case with first-degree murder and with interfering in a police investigation. And... Um, of course, we're going to continue to follow this case, but many of you, uh, of course, have been asking about Awatuki Sioux over the years. Many of you probably gave up and thought it was a hoax. But this tells you uh, how difficult police work is, uh, how complicated a police investigation is. It's not like television. It takes sometimes months or years to track people down. And uh, that's the one thing they can't convey in a one-hour show, like Without a Trace or Cold Case or CSI Miami or whatever. Uh, it's it's uh, actually very grueling work that goes on for, for very long periods of time, frequently uh, without the kind of result we've got here where they actually think they have the person. So um, here is your opportunity to make uh, some comments at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. We have a caller named Will who's listening to our online stream. Uh, he is in the uh, Phoenix area, Tempe area, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, Will? I'm doing great. I just wanted to say you have a huge fan base here in Phoenix still. We all listen to you over the radio, and we're really glad you're following up on the story. Well, thank you very much. How ironic that uh, this story breaks today, and we're not even on the air in Phoenix to talk about it. Uh, over the radio, over the, the computer you are, so it's all good. That's great. Uh, have you been following it on TV at all? Have you seen any of the stories about it? I haven't heard anything about it until just now, and I also heard the show two years ago. Fantastic. Well, uh, it's going to be all over TV news tonight in Phoenix. Uh, it's also uh, in the East Valley Tribune today and the Arizona Republic tomorrow. I just was interviewed by them, so you'll see it there as well. Awesome. I'll look for it. Tom, can you blow me up? I certainly can, Will. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Cisco on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's cracking, man? Somebody's ass as soon as I get out of here. <laughs> keep it real, Tom. Keep it real. Uh, but on a serious note, I had to put it out there because I don't think you've um, hit on this yet. Um, this is a prime example. When you have callers that listen to you but don't really listen to you, when you tell them to wear condoms, this is a very extreme example of what can happen to you if you don't listen to Tom Likas. No doubt about it. Yeah, well, uh, that's about it, Tom. I think I'm going to take myself out with the F.U. Azbuki Sue. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> All right, Tom. Take it easy, man. See you later. There we go. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Um, look, I, I know we can listen to it on, on the uh, the link on the, on the website and all, but I was wondering if you could play it just because, if I remember correctly, she said that she walked up to, to his door. When he opened the door, 
she popped around into his chest. That's not and what I'm, she said. It's not? No. Okay, then I'm mistaken, because I was wondering how they could rule it a suicide in the first place if that was the case. But if I'm, if I'm not remembering correctly, that's fine. As soon as I get home, I'm going to listen to the call anyway. Yeah. yeah, we've posted it. Rather than playing it over and over on the air, you go to the website and you can listen to it. Okay, then that's what I'll do. Very good, John. Thanks, Tom. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. A break in the Awatuki suitcase here on the Tom Likas Show. Will, hello. Well, hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm okay. I just had a question for you about the case, man. How? Okay, so she confessed on the radio, but, I mean, that doesn't hold up in a court of law, so how legally are they going to have anything stick to her? Well, first of all, you don't know whether that would hold up in a court of law or not. It depends on uh, how convincing it is that, that the person that is uh, being charged is actually the person on the call, number one. Right. Uh, number two, there are other, uh, if you listen to the interview we did with the uh, sergeant from the Phoenix Police Department, uh, they have other evidence about uh, uh, her calling the day after the broadcast and claiming that her cell phone was stolen. Right. Uh, and and other evidence, uh, uh, certain things that she said on the tape, indeed, if that was her, and that, again, is going to be determined, I imagine, by the uh, county attorney's office and eventually, hopefully, a jury. Uh, the, the police department says that she said things on that tape that only somebody who committed the crime could know. Okay, yeah, that's what I was curious about, because, I mean, if the body was cremated and all that, and it was just, you know, her speaking just on a radio show, I was just curious. Well, like, do you know why there's no physical evidence? Uh, well, she said the body was cremated, right? Yeah, but why? Um, at her request, I'm imagining. I don't know. Oh, well, I'm going to tell you why. The, um, the, in, in Arizona... Uh, when a case is ruled a suicide, uh, they keep all of the forensic evidence for five years. Oh, okay, and then cool. they destroy it. Uh, and so uh, isn't that interesting? Five years after 2001 is 2006. How convenient. She called, she called in 2006. That's, yeah, there's a lot of yeah, things that are convenient about this. Huh? <laughs> yes. So the question will be, uh, uh, is anybody going to buy all these convenient uh, coincidences? Right. As just coincidences. Right. I know it, Tom. Well, hey, thanks a lot for taking my call on uh, Bong Rip, and I thank you, Jesus. It'll be great. Here you go, Will. Thank you, Jesus. You can follow the story on our website, blowmeuptom.com. We'll have all the updates there. You can also uh, follow it up on our MySpace, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y. K-I-S. It's all there. Coming up next, Bob Saget. Stay right there. Tom Likas. Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. You're the biggest Latino I know, bro. <laughs> you, you like soccer, you would be a complete Latino, but that's not a top. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show from Hollywood at one 800 top Thank you for tuning in. We are joined in studio now by Bob Saget. Hello, sir. Good to see you again. Really good to see you. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, crazy news going on around here. It's guys, pretty insane. It's pretty insane. It, you know, it's getting to the point where people can just, uh, I guess, it off the person that they're not doing well with. That's right. And then. Uh, Kind of get away with it uh, for a while. For a while, anyway. Yeah, but then I guess the guilt <laughs> will we'll drive her to Carl's Jr. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I could never do that to anybody. You Dust couldn't shoot Carl's anybody? Me. I don't think so. <laughs> Let me think about it. <laughs> Not a person. If an animal was charging at me, like in the movies, where a thing just... I killed a rat a couple weeks ago. Did you really? Yeah, one of my agents was walking around in front of my house. <laughs> clubbed him with an oar. <laughs> Gave ten percent to the dog. <laughs> uh, no, I could never kill. I, if, if a thing's charging, like a wild boar or something, you know, like, <laughs> it's something fictional. But uh, uh, well, it's not. No, this is not fictional at all because this is all the stuff that happens at my new place. You know, I got this new place up north. I'm coming up. Come on up. I, you will, know. I will not be ignored. 
I got wild pigs uh, who are uh, rummaging through my uh, uh, landscape. Are they in thongs? Or is it... uh, no, is they, it... they, I dated uh, several of them <laughs> years ago, and now this is what they look like. You know, this you can do a reach around on those things and just cut out <laughs> all of the the, the the next steps of sex. I don't. I wouldn't do. Uh, I don't like four legged uh, sex. <laughs> Well it's, well, it's not really four legged. If, well, it is. If you're, if you, if you're, no, people don't do four legged, do they? No, because they have opposable uh, arms and legs. Yes, right? exactly. So if you're you're doing that, you're like a creature. You're like if you yes. have four legs. If you do, right? Some do. She shot. She really did. Do we know that she shot this guy for sure? She says she did. She well, a woman said she did, and police now say they know who the woman is. Well, first thing, God bless her for telling the truth. <laughs> That's. <laughs> But she's walking around, though. <laughs> she's walking around, and somebody told us there's video of her today backing out of her driveway, yelling at the cameras, I am not a murderer! Wow. Was she wearing, like, a... Was it, I don't want to talk about her. I just realized... I don't know what she was wearing. She's out there. You better wear a condom, though. You better wear a hangman's hood if you're walking around <laughs> her. I'm, she's probably, you know, I don't even want to... I probably shouldn't talk about her and stuff, being that she's out there and all. She's out there? Yeah. Hmm. Now she does have, uh, according, according to the police, she has a boyfriend and uh, another kid. Well, that's great. That's great because this guy will will make support. Oh yeah, he'll the, be paying. This guy's not missing. Yes, a he'll be paying regularly. <laughs> he'll be paying through the chest. <laughs> well, that's good. You know what? They, they should put in a, a couple extra doors in the house. Why? Just, just for easy access. <laughs> you know, so she can get in and get rid of him. I bet guys are waiting in line for, for her to shoot them. No, I, you know, some, something, I'm just guessing. I don't know anything about this at all till I got here today because yes. I've been out of the loop myself. Yes. Because I was really busy uh, dodging uh, all the girls that have been trying to kill me. <laughs> but this, uh, you know, I, I think something happened to her along the way. You think so? <laughs> I'm, just get, I'm taking a shot. There was... Something. Don't say taking a shot today. No. Damn it! <laughs> you know, I, I would. I don't think she's ever watched In Treatment on HBO. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't think she's ever heard anyone say, "And how are we today?" <laughs> I don't think she's ever heard that. But I do know she will not be ignored. <laughs> she should be uh, a press agent. She'd be a really good publicist. You think so? Yeah. I mean, for, she'll get it right out there. You know, if, if you're in, if she's in music, you know, she's number one with a bullet. No, no, sorry. But then, but the thing is, you know, a lot of the publicists that you meet at these things in this in this town of uh, Hollywood, where we're coming from, yes, uh, they they'll do anything to get their people in. They'll push people out of the way. They're kind of uh, some of them are very nice and beautiful, and some yes. are, they pull at you like they're kind of a. a a CGI character yes. in a film, like the things in The Mummy that come at you. That's what it's like sometimes. I'm not saying anything negative. I'm saying, what? Is that misogynistic or evil in any way? No. I would say take me out with a bong, but we'd have to go to commercial. <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm saying, Tom. Help me here. Help me. I just dug nine holes, and I, I feel like I'm going to be attacked. Oh, my God. She's going to jump on the roof of my car and try to rip <laughs> off the sunroof. Is she, is she? She's probably capable. I don't want to talk about her. But there are some girls whose strength is stronger than, definitely stronger than mine. Yeah. And they're capable of ripping metal. You know, they get they get angry. In adrenaline, you know, a, a, a woman spurned. You know, hell hath no fear. They can jump on the roof of your car, I believe in, open it. Like a sardine can, and reach in and pull you out and disembowel you through your mouth. That's how upset some of these people get. I know they do. And only about 30% of them are publicists. <laughs> <laughs> but they get stuff done. They get stuff done. They get you They get you front and center, and then they draw and quarter you. Yes, that's... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. That's exactly right. Any woman that's trying to reach into my soul with her arm. That's my kind of girl. Wants to hold me like a Toomey walk-on case. I'm very frightened because first thing I brought it up. She's and she's uh she's not she's not under house arrest or anything. No, which is fine. I mean, sounds great. <laughs> sounds awesome. I mean, imagine uh, you're being charged with murder and you get to hang out at home with your newborn. That hasn't happened since uh, several years ago in Brentwood. <laughs> Oh, that was a scary time. Things are better now. Oh yeah, I was in a uh, in a sushi restaurant once, and OJ was in there. I yeah. don't know what made me think of him. And um, <laughs> I was in there with my daughters, and you know, it was. Sure, there wasn't a teppanyaki restaurant. It was actually. I told them that he killed all the fish, <laughs> and uh, there was a glove in the sushi case. <laughs> in the ice. 
<laughs> but you can't charge a man until he's proven. Uh, you can't have Awatuki. Uh, <laughs> it's a good name. That's where she's from, right? Yes. Right. Awatuki is a, yeah. is a section of Phoenix, south of the airport. I probably have been through it. I go to Phoenix. I love it out there. Yeah. Scottsdale, Tempe, Awatuki. Yes. Awatuki sounds like something that you would have if you were, you know, Native American. You would have it burned into your ass. <laughs> it sounds like on either side. Awatuki it sounds like with the San Diego Padres with a minor league team. <laughs> but th- now, now, but that we know her name is Sue, though. That's her first name. Um, the uh, person who is alleged to be the killer, her middle name is Suzanne. And oh. it's very common for Dino, our screener, to tell people, if you don't want to give out your name, use your middle name. So um, I don't know if that's what he said to her, but he says that frequently to callers uh, when they're going on the air. And most of your female callers have the middle name Sue? <laughs> just uh, no, just apparently this one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be horrible if they were all the murderer. Dean says he did say that to Awatuki Sue, by the way. Just I keep... like her name. It's something hot. You know, and with fame comes heat. That's right. You know, there's, there's nothing like a famous killer woman. <laughs> I mean, Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie was portrayed by Faye Dunaway in that movie. She was so hot. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Who else? What other murdering women? That they, uh, <laughs> The old lady in From Russia With Love, Uta Hagen. That was hot. <laughs> she had her kicks. I recall that correctly. Any other murderers that were, uh, no? Hot murderers? Yeah. Are they all hot, the murderers? I don't think so. Can't think of any others right now. Richard Ramirez. Yeah, he's hot. The night, the what was he? The night uh, stalker. Yeah, yeah. He had that whole. He had a lot of good stuff. He had all those chicks who wanted to marry him after uh, after he went to prison. Well, how can that's what it is? It's publicity, which takes me to again makes me believe that the publicists. <laughs> they it's cre- all about publicists. I think they create murderers. <laughs> I think I think publicity. If you look at it, since you know, since I've come on the show over the years, TMZ became this gigantic, not just a, a, a network and a thing, but it's a way of media that didn't exist a few years ago. That's right. And people go out of their way it, to get publicity. And crime like this is is actually found hot in a way it's oddly attractive and sin and a lot of good when i say sin i never said the word sin because i've been doing it a very long time so i don't know why i said that i think i just wanted to elmer gantry i don't know what happened you sinners take some of that you bastards Uh, put a pinch of this between your cheek and cheek sorry i'm doing a voice from the video show i don't know know what happened to me tom but i do think it, it causes so many people end up with reality shows from making porn i mean they they actually film porn and then they get their own reality show yeah where was it for me back in the day <laughs> could have had a stand-in a fluffer all that good stuff <laughs> could have had some other dude come in pretend he was me i would have looked awesome by the way is a fluffer a union gig i i would hope so because i'm in that union <laughs> and when they go on strike nobody gets off you can't uh, can't pick it <laughs> you got a scab it gives the word fluffer nutter a whole new meaning fluffer nutter Farfignugan. <laughs> Awatuki Sue. Yes. That's a movie. I think it is. I think it's something. Or it's an episode on Cold Case, of all things. <laughs> I actually would like to cold... I can't say what I was going to say. No, you can say cold cock means to hit somebody over the head. Uh, no, the cold cock of Nolly means to hit uh, it means to hit somebody unexpectedly. Oh, okay. So, but with your penis? <laughs> no. Oh. Yeah, but if you have... Because they have on top of a rooster's head is a cock. Is that correct? Uh, no, that is called something else. That's called the... Testicles? No. What is that called, that thing on the... On the, a rooster's head? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it makes a sound. I know that. Mm, it's a it's that, a rubberized thing. That it looks, thing. Like, yeah. It's, right. That would be the sound of a cock. I know that anywhere. Yes. You know, um... All right. What? Yeah, yeah, we cro- we've crossed enough lines. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh... It's 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 upsetting that people, uh, you know, you can't kill somebody. You have to somehow either leave them, as you say, if, if you said forever on here. That's right. Don't stay together. Right. Or um, kill them. Nope. Sorry, my bad. Um, or uh, stay together if you want, but you don't really believe in that. But I, there are people that are happy together. I know some of them, a couple of them. Really? Okay, none. <laughs> <laughs> I know I do have a couple friends that have stayed together and they've been through a lot of stuff together. Happy? Um I think I think for the most part yes. I think it comes down to, after 30 years it comes down to 52% happy if if they want to look at that. It's a glass is half full of their own urine. <laughs> <laughs> 
I believe you have to let a, a relationship run its course. And so does Awatuki Sue. <laughs> Awatuki Sue says she, she just goes from zero to 90 very quickly. <laughs> Poor girl. She really jumped it. Oh, boy. She jumped the shark. <laughs> um, I saw her years ago in, in uh, Mexico on the donkey show. She was fantastic. Really? No. Because <laughs> she's out there. I keep forgetting I'm talking about somebody that's out there. There's a safety inside the walls of this place that don't exist when I leave the walls of this place. Like that's, that's what I should have thought about. Speaking of the walls of this place, that's something that her boyfriend never said. <laughs> The walls of this place. <laughs> Hurry back. That's what, it, after you're done having sex with her, you hear the little voice from the haunted mansion. By the way, the, the red part of the rooster's head is called a comb or a coxcomb. Oh, a coxcomb. I say I don't, I shave. So now I use a small lint brush. I use double stick tape. You know, it's embarrassing to use a coxcomb because... Um, what? <laughs> I mean, if I'm a rooster. If you're taking a rooster, do you guys, when's Thanksgiving? Is it coming up? I think it's a couple of months here. Can you, uh, you can eat a turkey. Can you eat a rooster? Can you? Is it? Yes, is, yes, you can eat a rooster. Is that I think they do it in Spain. They eat rooster in Spain. Yes, I believe so. You cook it like you would a turkey? I I don't know how I, I I you know where they eat it I'm going to tell you where they eat it uh, they eat it in France and I know because the 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 meal called uh, coq au vin spelled C O Q that's not a it's not an interpretation of the word coxcomb is it no it's not <laughs> coq au vin is uh, it literally uh, is rooster uh, in wine that's what uh, or in a wine sauce. So um, that's my big question at this point is the, the thing on the head of the rooster. Do they cook that as well? And would that be something like a delicacy that they would bring you after the meal? Or would you have it right before? Would you have a little, before you have your main course, would you have a little uh, coxcomb? No, nah, I don't. I've never seen it. Don't um, know. Mm. I'm, I didn't see it in France. That'd be pretty awesome to be sitting there and just someone just put... <laughs> That that thing that sits on the rooster's head in front of you, and then you just you eat, eat it. it. Yeah, you eat it in front of people. Yeah, I'll bet you Awatuki Sue never had one of those. <laughs> but if she did, she'd be really mad at the chef. <laughs> what are you putting in front of me? <laughs> I don't need coxcomb <laughs> for rooster. I would. I would. Uh, I'm so scared right now. I'm so, I'm so scared on so many levels. How long did it take me to dig a hole I cannot get out of? <laughs> Usually it takes me this, uh, at least a segment or two. This let's is... let's talk about Comedy Central. Yeah, right? Yes. Pretty crazy. Yeah, the, 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 the folks at Comedy Central are roasting our guest here, Bob Saget. Yep, it comes on the August 17th, uh, 10 o'clock, uh, and then uh, I guess it's uh, 9 o'clock uh Coxcomb time. Yes, I understand. Which is, is just where they eat that. <laughs> Let's go back into the hole. Serve that up. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty crazy roast. John Stamos was the roast master. Yes. So that tells you all you need to know, really. I guess it does. <laughs> and uh, Dave Collier was there in the audience, and uh, it was a very full house kind of night. Lori, it wasn't really? Lori Lachlan, Jody Sweeten, Scott Wanger from the show was there. And uh, there were a lot of jokes that were uh, that were over the line, and uh, they're editing it now. A guy named Joel Gallen and uh, is the guy. He's a, he's the guy. He's an amazing guy. He made that after nine eleven, like four days after nine eleven, that crazy amazing two day tribute with Bruce Springsteen and U two that was on all three networks. Yes, he made it, and they gave him an honorary Emmy for that. He get, literally got all the talent within a week and put all those people. That was pretty amazing. It was pretty amazing. Now, now it's my comedy roast. <laughs> it's the nine eleven of comedy. <laughs> and uh, it was pretty. It was. It was actually very fun. I was nervous because I've been uh, spotting my pants for weeks <laughs> over it. It didn't put me in a good mode to be around in general <laughs> really? with, with my uh, girlfriend and uh, with uh, most people that I know. <laughs> Just because you come, all, everybody on the on the day is uh, all friends of mine. It was uh, Jeff Ross and Gilbert Gottfried and Greg Giraldo and Susie Essman and. Um, and uh, John Lovitz, yeah, a friend of mine, I'm saying it on the air. And uh, Norm MacDonald and, um, uh, God, my, my mind's really doing well right now. Um, some of my best friends. Cloris Leachman was actually hilarious. She said, somebody hit me in the face so I could see some stars. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was a nice night. I'll bet it was. 
And uh, Jeff Garland, that's who I was trying to think of. So yeah. all I was writing was jokes about how ugly people were and how uh, the women on the day is how large their uh, lower parts are. Yes. Um, there were some very funny uh, things said. A couple things are not going to be on the air. One of them said about, uh, I think it, I'm trying to think of it was, it might have been Jim Norton said about uh, Cloris Leachman's um, uh Ass? No, her her front ass. Her boobs? <laughs> no, her the thing around the other side of the ass. Coxbow. Oh. Co- her coxbow. Uh, the- <laughs> so that that will not make the air. <laughs> and Dave's a friend of mine. But those are the kind of things. And they took shots at me that were uh, quite painful. That, <laughs> really? That are available on the uh, Comedy Central website right now. I don't know how of them. How some of them are just getting on the web in a in a amazing. viral way. It's an amazing how did that business. Happen? It's a uh, scary. I don't know how it oh happened. My goodness! I think it's the publicists. It's those amazing girls <laughs> that are able to leap onto your car and rip your tire iron out through the trunk, and then cut you open with it, and then you go, "Oh my God, let's go to Roku and have some sushi." <laughs> um, but uh, it was. It, I, I really enjoyed it, and they had an amazing party afterward. All the people from Comedy Central literally couldn't have been nicer. And uh, and now I'm just uh, running roughshod, trying to take care of all my friends who are <laughs> laying in the wake of this painful <laughs> Awatuki Sioux catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually uh, they're roasting uh, Awatuki Sioux. Is that so? <laughs> well, she's she's on fire right now. <laughs> she's inflamed. <laughs> she's got a goiter. A woman can't get a goiter, can they? Um. Gee, I don't know. Isn't goiter a male uh, problem? I haven't checked into that. I've got a lot to do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> be Googling my goiter. We've got to take a break here. <laughs> and we're going to come back with Bob Saget. Uh, you'll see his roast on Comedy Central coming up a week from Sunday. Yeah, it's good that it's on a Sunday. Give you an, a full week to cleanse yourself to your next uh, <laughs> chance if you're biblical. <laughs> take a break. Your telephone calls are coming up next. one 800 like this. Five eight hundred Tom like this like this eight six six Tom like this like this one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. I just wanted to tell you who my favorite girlfriend is. Who is that? The next one. <laughs> <laughs> the Tom like this show. Yeah, from Hollywood, it's the Tom like this show. Thank you for tuning in. Bob Saget's here. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. And, and what an amazing coincidence. This song is not about anybody who's being charged with murder. It just happened to be a song that we found on the Internet. We don't have it. What happened to it? It got shot. <laughs> There's something wrong. Last I knew, we were going to play that. We had it. Something. I think I erased it. Now we're not going to play it. Oh, now we are going to play. <laughs> All right. That's a fast... I think he just crapped himself. I'm just saying. We're just not going to play it. We are going to play it. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's play it now. I want to kiss you. You sure look real fine. Out of my mind, I know this time I'll talk to you. The joy is hopping in the country's loud. I'd like to take you out on the dance floor and spin you around. I would to kiss you. I would to kiss you. I would to kiss you. To kiss. There we go. Very oh, fantastic. nice. Fantastic. <laughs> now that is an old song. That is not new, and it's remarkably short, which I find to be almost jingle-like. Which means that when it was written five, six years ago, or maybe even fifteen, that could have been Hank Williams Jr.'s nephew. That's exactly right. Wow, that is such a coincidence. I love that damn thing. That's that's awesome. Um, Wow. Did, did you do you have a uh, I left Sir Han Sir Han in San Francisco? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, Let's take some calls for Bob Saget here. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Garrett on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Bob. Hello, sir. 
I'm a big fan, Bob. Uh, Thank you. You know, from Full House, the whole deal. <laughs> I know, but you don't want to confess that all the time around guys. Not, no, not recently, <laughs> but yeah. Right when you were young, how, you were, you were like a kid watching Full House, right? Yeah, I was like ten. Right. right. Yeah, I just wanted to get your comments and uh, what you think about Artie Lang missing out on your uh, your roast and also the breaking news of him going to rehab. Yeah, um, Artie is a good friend, and I, I love him, and I'm very happy that he's in rehab, and uh, he sent me a, a text message apologizing. He felt really bad about it. Oh, that's and nice. uh, Yeah, it was really, really nice. And um, so he was missed because he, we actually built the stage to withstand him. <laughs> yeah, with shops underneath? It was everything. It was like yeah. a building downtown, and uh, we had, it threw the whole thing off. So... Uh, but I, I love him and wish him the best, and uh, I'm going to hopefully see him soon after he gets out of there. And uh, That's cool. Hey, can I we're ask gonna one go more out, question? We're going to go out uh, drinking and celebrate. <laughs> oh, that's, that's wonderful. Hey, w- were you offended what Gilbert Godfrey said? Um, you know, I'm... I'm a guy who's, you know, my edge is, I don't even have one anymore. <laughs> I guess I've been so rounded with my, uh, whatever. I don't really get offended. I just love the people that I love. So when jokes are at their expense, I try to take care of them. You know what I mean? Oh, I know you're, you're dirty as they, as they come, but. <laughs> I read Sorry. something online about okay? you, how you were offended by Gilbert Godfrey and John Stamos about the Ashley, uh, Olson and all the statements made about that. No, uh, Yes. Uh, no. Uh, not really. Um, I. I uh, I'm still thrown, but that, that I. That I might have been. Uh, I might have been taken out for a second there. Ah, oh, I feel so bad. I don't usually do that. But but you know you spell things differently, don't you? In radio. Yes. Sorry, man. I didn't mean to not. Listen no one to your could question. see how it's spelled though in radio. That's on TV. You could have written it out. Well, that's like the expression. I don't know if I'm coming or going. If it, just like I'm here and I want to be here. That's all I'm well, saying. Well, hey, I love you both. Live long and prosper and goodbye. Well, sorry, man. To answer his question, if hope is still listening, I just blew him off because I was thrown by my own bleepage. <laughs> but um, God, I never get bleeped. What's wrong with me? But apologies, everyone. But uh, I wasn't really uh, uh, offended. I just love the people to the degree I don't care if they make fun of me because I'm an easy target just look at me for God's sakes <laughs> but uh, yeah the people that I, I care about a lot uh, that are that are younger and stuff I just I why do I care because I love people you know I'm up with my favorite person is Awatuki Sue that's uh, <laughs> I'm at- was she there by the way Hell yeah. she on the dais? She is the dais. <laughs> she's awesome. She's, uh, you know, what a difference a dais makes. <laughs> she's, she's great. The, da- the dais of our lives. She, she doesn't, uh, I shouldn't talk about her anymore. I've gotten in a lot of trouble here today. I got bleeped over. It wasn't even a dirty word. That's the worst. Well, it's subjective. It's all subjective. How long does it go away for? It doesn't. Some people don't even know what I'm talking about. But my recognizance work is more believable than the things I say. God, I can quiet a room. Recognizance. I'm trying to go back in and help the world. Tom, save me. You're the only one that knows how to do this. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. That's how you do it. Uh, it's Lourdes on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Bob. Hi, Hi Lourdes. Tom. Hi. Hi. So I had a question that the last guy kind of ruined. It was, uh, it was, I haven't seen the roast yet, but I was wondering if... Anybody made any cracks about the Olsen twins? Because I know Dave Coulier um, got offended when somebody made a comment about it and yelled at the person who made the comment. No, the truth of it is, you know, it's really funny. No one really got offended. We just uh, care about people. But but nobody, like, got... We all made comments to the press, and I think that's... It, it turns into anger, but it was just, a you know, statements of, oh, you know, I thought that was a little over the top. That's pretty much how I said it to the reporter. And then it got into anger. <laughs> saw the word anger attached. But Dave... Dave was, we were all, you know, we love, uh, Ashley and Mary Kate and their famous people that, uh, that, yes, jokes were made and, uh, some of them I, I think will make air, but most of the jokes that have, uh, reference to them are just criticizing me, just saying I'm, I'm an absolute disgusting human being. Yay, and that's why I always wish you were my daddy instead of theirs. Thank you, that's how it starts. Um, are you in a space station? Um, I'm in the attic. <laughs> You're in the attic? Are you at the Anne Frank house? Sort of. The Anne Frank house. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, another thing to say. I don't know if I'm really going to get in trouble for saying this, but Uh-oh. I used to work on porno sets. I used to do the wardrobe and art department. We're all ears. And um, <laughs> uh, Gilbert Gottfried, on my very first shoot that I went to, Gilbert Gottfried was there, and I don't know if I'm even supposed to mention that. No, he loves hearing stuff like that, I'm sure. Was he just enjoying the craft service table? Oh, he was just watching... Um, 
one of the scenes get filmed while riding like an exercise bicycle, and it was the best moment of my life. He wait, didn't say wait, anything wait a to second. Me. I'll tell you what's not, but I don't believe about that is that Gilbert was on an exercise bicycle. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't really like working out. He was just kind of sitting on it because there wasn't any chairs. Was there a seat on it? Yeah, I think. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Unbelievable! You made my memory better. I'm <laughs> good. I'm, I'm I'm here to help your memory get better. <laughs> well, get out of the attic and and have a good night in the basement. All right, I love you. Bye. Uh, thank you. There goes Lourdes. She's a very very sweet girl. That was an interesting uh, sound she'd effect. Like, she'd like you to be her daddy. Well, you know, I don't think that's healthy for people. I think they need to deal with people on a on a level to level peer basis, right? <laughs> that's exactly right. You know, when someone says, you know, be my daddy, that that's not what people want, is it? I don't think she literally meant that. Oh, you, she, you didn't mean she, maybe we want to make support payments, like uh, not not like Awatuki Sue. No, no, Awatuki would want some. She'd want some support payments. Yes, to take care of her. She'd want you to be her daddy in a different way. Right, she, Lord is. Just wanted you to bend, you know, wanted to bend her over, wanted you to bend her over. Well, she could be the lordess of my fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! What? What? <laughs> Ow! That actually was my colon that made that sound. <laughs> I have a double hemi. It's the Tom Likas show. We're here with Bob Saget. You'll see his roast coming up on Comedy Central one week from Sunday. For God's sake, Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Joey. What's happening, man? It's doing a radio show here. Hey, hey, Bob, how are you? I'm cool. How you doing, man? Good, man. Hey, I wanted to ask you a question. Certainly. Whatever happened to the predictability? I knew you were going to do the something like man, that. The milkman, the paperboy, even MTV. We miss the most familiar faces waiting just around the bend. You're still going. Hey. Yeah, I have a yeah, question. Thing, I, I know, but let me ask you a question. I never knew what happened after the milkman and the paperboy. That sounded scary to me that they were uh, involved. I think that's where I came from, dude. But what the does milkman. it say? It says milkman and the paperboy. What's the next lyric? Even MTV. Even MTV. You know what? Milkman and the paperboy. Even MTV. We I... miss the most familiar faces. Oh, you're still going. Waiting just around the band. <laughs> Then whatever happens, I don't know what happens. Oh, everywhere, happens. everywhere you look, Awatuki Sue is there to hold on to you. <laughs> hey, Tommy, you take me out of the bong rip, no cough? All right, Joey. Here you Thanks. go. Bye, man. <laughs> no cough. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. <laughs> it's my fantasy in life is to have men call and sing the full house thing. It doesn't get any more fruity pebbles than that. Yeah, I'll is... tell you who doesn't have a full house is Awatuki Sue. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely air vents that weren't there before. <laughs> Leroy on the Tom Lyka show. We're here with Bob Saget. Hello. Hello, Tom. What's yeah. up? You're the man. Thank um, you. Second year for you, man. Just loving it. Bob, Yo. you're sick. You're sick, man. But, I apologize. You know, I, love you, love you. Um, I just want to ask you a couple of things. One, yeah. Are you done with the fisting? Uh, I don't. I don't. Only applauding. Only that's all I do it for. I, I applaud. <laughs> oh man, funny, funny. Um, I'm I'm sick, and you ask me that. <laughs> I thought it was the crowd. What do you think? Yeah, oh, that's true. I don't remember. Oh, that's what you meant. Sorry. I've tried to block out everything that's happened before I heard the words Awatuki Sue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, Bob, I um, usually came across a scene from the series Hut with it- um, you and I were tired, um and it was and that is some of the funny stuff I've ever seen. And it was hard to hear you. Did you just order some risotto? I apologize. <laughs> Are you in the attic? Are you no, circling no. the globe in a saucer with that girl? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. What he, was that? He last? got four free phones with his new cell phone service. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's Three dollars a phone. Maybe, <laughs> hey, maybe it was that two C two. Who knows? Who knows? I I don't know. Um, you're not driving on the stuff you're on, are you? <laughs> no, no way. No okay, way, no you be sir, you no be sir. safe. I worry about. It. All of a sudden, I turn into a cop. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you well, man. That's all I want. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, <laughs> now I um, came across her, and I saw you in a scene with um, the other player, other player, and um, I have to say, that's some of the funny stuff I've ever saw. Thank you. Do you have a windscreen in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I heard the funniest stuff I you ever saw, and I appreciate it. I missed the beginning. He's calling from Ed McMahon's place at the four level interchange. <laughs> <laughs> what what freeware are you on? Are you allowed to say that? Um I'm on the five right now, five south. Are you near Magic Mountain? No. Mm. 
No way. Um, I'm going to go there tonight at midnight. I'll meet you there in the parking lot. <laughs> Awatuki <laughs> Sue and I are gonna we're gonna have a uh, tailgate party. Oh man, I bet, I bet. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna tailgate her. I'm gonna follow uh, no. too closely. No, I just want to. I just want to say I love that scene. I uh, love you on that. I just want to ask you how you felt about show um, Huff being cut off after uh, the show. Huff, did you say? Uh, Huff, uh, Huff. The th- uh, I did a thing on Huff. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a great show with Hank Azaria on Showtime, and I did a guest starring thing on that. And I was, uh, I was only on it once, but I was really upset when it got canceled. (laughs) Because it actually, the guy that uh, produced it's brilliant, uh, and it's a great show. So it actually, uh, I actually was upset, but they've, there's some other shows that are good (laughs) that are on that have kind of kept me afloat after they, after they canceled it. I have a new show. You have a new show? I have a new show. Surviving Suburbia. Yeah, it starts in November on the CW channel, and it's about a guy who is not uh, happy with his family that much. He loves his uh, wife, uh, and he loves his kids, but he'd rather not be there. And he doesn't like people, and he doesn't like his neighbors. And he drinks. Is this a reality show? No, it's a, it's a, a thing written by a great writer, Kevin Abbott, who was a writer on uh, Reba, and uh, Earl, my name is Earl, and uh, Roseanne. And it's got a lot of good people on it. Oh, reality shows have writers too. This is a sitcom, though. This oh, it's is a sitcom. A, it's a, uh, it's a yeah. I know. <laughs> Sounds like a documentary. <laughs> it is. It's it, it's similar to a life I've uh, I've been around in my life. So it's it's I'm looking forward to it. It's be some fun acting work. Bob Saget. Look for him on the Comedy Central roast of Bob Saget Sunday, August seventeenth. Surviving Suburbia, November second. Great to see you. Thank you for having me, Tom. Bob Saget, everybody. The Tom Likas Show.